Let's face it, as Nintendo fans, we are often left slightly disappointed and scratching our heads asking why. Where is our Super Mario Galaxy 3? Why isn't Metroid out yet? Bring back the Ice Climber seriously, and what were you thinking with the Virtual Boy? Well, sit back as Sean Capri and Bobby Pauls do just that. That's right, this is If We Ran Nintendo. Now, cue the music, maestro. What is up, everybody, and welcome to episode 23 of If We Ran Nintendo. I am Bobby, the Nintendo Guru, joined by my best friend, Sean That's Capri. me! <laughs> it's me, we're back. Oh, yes. But I don't want you to start anything. I don't want oh, you to... It's fine. Listen, no, you're making it, people mad. You're no, starting... it's not. He, listen, it's all, listen to me. When I tell you the truth, Toby loves you. It's the, it's the I truth. I love Toby. It's not, it's just fun. It's just good. Like, me and Toby have this thing where we throw little digs at each other and we get it. And we're like brothers, man. He loves me. I love him. Like, it's okay. Trust me. I don't want, I don't want you to pit us against each other, though. That's the the whole thing. You're like, you're like the hot girl in high school. Listen, he took the shots. He took the shots on the other podcast. It ain't my fault. And I said it to him. Don't start that. Don't do that. (laughs) I know. And then you guys called me sensitive and you called me a baby. But whatever. Baby, did I? I didn't upset me. It just like water off a duck's back or whatever. That's not that's not the text I got. <laughs> <laughs> Shh, I, don't I'm, tell anybody. I'm one minute into the geek cast and I'm furious. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what what's he mad about? Because Toby wouldn't talk about to talk about Daniel Craig. Like, what's he mad about? And all of a sudden I'll go, Oh, the best friend thing. That's yeah. the best thing too, is when people will like mention something that you said on a podcast you're like i record even if you just recorded yesterday yeah, like, i have yeah. no idea what you're talking about i, I sort know. of just black out i do i do too you know what's funny is it's weird i i listen to all the podcasts that we record so i listen to this i listen to Keycast. if i go special guest on stuff i listen to them um and the main reason is because because of that i can't remember what i said mm-hmm. it's like this is an hour of fury and i don't remember anything when it's done so I go back to listen just so I go, oh, yeah, that's what I talked about. All right, okay. You know, and, and it sounds weird that you would forget, but it just, I don't know why. It's it like just a happens. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's a weird thing. We get into a weird twilight black black hole zone of yeah. podcasting. Plus, I do so many podcasts. They all tend to run together, and I can't keep track of what's what. So I know. I think even you were saying something, and now I'm going to forget what the heck I was listening to. I'm like, I don't remember. Oh, we were saying that I said – I want every amiibo in the yarn style or whatever. Yes. I'm like, did I? Was that me? Yeah, you, you did were say that. Remember, I'm like, I don't remember if that was me or not. Yeah, you said that. I remember you saying that to me one time. And I'm like, that is a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> Whoever <laughs> said that. Um. Yeah. So well, good to be back. We haven't done this in uh, two weeks. I know. You know what? Thank God we did what we did because it never would have happened. The internet was oh, so really? bad there. It took me. When I tell you, it took me an hour. To upload, if we ran Nintendo, and Bob, you get what you pay audio. for. That's I just think that's audio. what you said to me. Yeah. Oh my. Listen, I, I pay a lot for that, so I'm not really getting what I pay for. Trust me. Ouch. Ouch. Like it's it's not cheap to go there. Um, but whatever, it doesn't matter. It, you know, it got up. Everything was good. Um, yeah, you got it up. Everybody yeah. was happy. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um. The Mark Carabin episode was really good. Hour and a half we, we went on, man. Like Not that long was, enough, in my opinion. Dude, that, that was it, that was great. It was a good episode. I went back and listened, and I was like, wow, man, we really got into it, man. We were, like, having a good time with that one. So him and I always – you know what? Him and I together is what spawned this to some degree. You know what I mean? Like – yeah, to Justin Masson's, I've told that story numerous times where I went on Nintendo Dads, and that's where, like, the concrete stuff came. But mm-hmm. Mark and I, being on a show, he, he filled in the Geek Cast one day for us. And what happened was I lost everything. I had a guest on, me and Toby recorded on a Saturday, and lost everything. So I panicked, and I messaged Mark, and I'm like, dude, I need you now. He's like, what's the matter? I'm like, just give me 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Come on. 
let's just talk video games, no topics, let's just free flow and have a good time. I said, because I just lost everything. He's like, absolutely. Give me like five minutes and I'll meet up with you. So we go, we do the thing, had no topics, nothing, went on for 40 minutes and just free flowed and just never missed a beat, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I was like, when I got done that episode, I was like, dude, I want a show like that where there's like really no where I have to hunt for stuff and all where it just, you just get on and talk. And when you and I did your podcast, I was going to say, that's why I like doing my show. <laughs> yeah, That's when I was like, boom. I was like, I really click with Sean. I need to find something to do with this guy because he reminds me of Mark and, and Mark's too busy. And Mark's dude. He's come on, Mark. I know he's, he's, he, he makes me sick, man. He's, <laughs> he drives me up the wall, man. We what do you be, mean? We could be doing the show together. We should be doing the show together. That's and, the magic. And, That's the magic combination. Yeah, he does. Him and I Toby, do. T- Toby and me were just like, we're the, no, we're the B stop, grade. Man. Mark yeah. is, no, it, it, no, 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 no. Let me tell you something. Let me tell Mark you something. something. Special. So, so Toby and I kicked it down. We're down to two people, and we didn't mm-hmm. officially – talk about or anything it was just conflicting schedules with holly and 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 alan gotta keep it stateside where, and and well toby's not stateside toby's over wait there. a minute yeah relax so um so, like so so more or less you know it's just toby and i and i'll be honest with you like the past couple episodes where it's just him and i i'm loving it man i like i really i got done yesterday's episode and it was just like it brought a smile to my face because him and I really get along well. And it's funny because when it's him and I, it takes me back to like when I first started the geek cast and it was just him and I, and I had such fun with just doing the podcast with him because Toby does this thing where he talks about things and it comes off extremely intellectual. I know. I told him the same thing. Yeah, man. Like he talks about stuff and it's like, who am I talking to over there? Like, where'd this guy come from? I don't know whether it's the British accent or what it is, but something about it just makes me go, wow, this guy knows what he's talking about. Like he's really got it together. He thinks about things in a different spin than I do. And you do the same thing, honestly. And I think that's why it works so well for me anyway, because numerous times I've gone on little tangents with you, like where I'm like saying like, this is what I believe. And then you just sit back, you listen, and then you go, you don't go, no, you're wrong. You go, well, this is what I think. And then you start talking. And I go, he's right. I'm wrong. Can I tell you something though about that? I think I just realized as you were explaining them, like, I guess I do do that. But I think that that has taken me 30 years to figure out how to contribute to a conversation that (laughs) I don't really like agree with like at all. And like that has always paralyzed me for so long where I'm like, I don't really have a jumping in point. Like there really isn't like that natural thing. So I don't know. It's just, it's because of doing podcasts. You're like, well, I should probably say something. I should probably yeah. figure out a way to do that. So yeah, I don't know. It's, I, I think well, that's listen, why I like just podcasting we on, with you. We went on David Moore show and, and totally just ran that show. So I love David Moore, man. He's, he's awesome. Is, he's the man. Oh, he's great. I love that dude. That dude. Listen, David, I just want to let you know in the world of Amiibo, I am winning my friend. Oh, so snap. You know, I have Did you all. see they're going to, they're going to reprint. Some of the uh, some of the harder to get ones. They're reprinting Gold Mario. Are they really? Yeah. So talk for a second. I'm gonna, wow. I'm gonna that that kind of bring this up. You know what? It was weird because I didn't want them to reprint it, that one. And I think you know what? I did notice that because if you watch the last the Nintendo Direct, they show all the new amiibo that are coming out, and they go, mm-hmm. "We're we're issuing these, and we're bringing back some of these." And Gold Mario's there. Silver Mario is not, but Gold Mario was there. And I went, wait a minute, are they reissuing that? And that kind of, man, I sat outside for hours waiting for that thing. That well, one kind of stinks. You're going to love this. So it was on GoNintendo.com uh, mm-hmm. earlier today. They had a busy day today, actually. There's yeah. a ton of just rumors and all of this other stuff circling around. So uh, they said they're going to reprint. It looks like they're going to confirm reprints on Samus, Sonic, Dark Pit, Mega Man, Gold Mario, and Robin. That's nice. That's so nice. I missed 
gold Mario. It was a Walmart exclusive. Yes, yes. And I missed out on that one. And I'll actually go buy one and keep it in the package this time. There um, you go. That's I definitely do, one. I can't believe you yeah, took that one out of all I know. Of I, I really, that's the one that I was like, I'm going to keep it in the package. And then I was like, you know what? I've opened them all up. I'm just going to open this one. So I'll get that one and put it in the package and, and not do it. So let's uh let's kick this episode off like we do each and every episode with our shout outs. Shout outs. <laughs> not wrong show song. Um <laughs> so the first <laughs> I know it is the first <laughs> the, you, always... I, 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 <laughs> you know what I think that is? That's our that, that's our baker's dozen. Baker's dozen. That's oh, our baker's no, dozen. That's not what I, uh, but I like right. it. I like it when you do it. I so I always you know I realized it a couple weeks ago when I was listening and I was like Every week he says that, and then I come back and go, no, wrong show, wrong show, show. I because- secretly wish that one day you're going to be like, you know what? Let's do geek outs. <laughs> one, day, <laughs> one day I might surprise you. Um, I just told so you I, was geek- one- I snuck it in there already. So the first okay. one I want to give a shout out to was your recent guest um, who I tweeted about today. Um, Chris Birdo. Chris Birdo. Dude, you know, you'll do this thing sometimes where you'll message me and you'll tell me like, man, this conversation went really, really well. I think this is a good episode. And that typically tips me off that you're very pleased with the episode. Mm -hmm. And then I really should listen to it. Now I listen to everyone that you do. That's, um, you know, we, the gamer cast is probably my favorite podcast that I listen to. And that's, that's the truth. That's very Um, nice. Thank you. So, but that aside, you know what I mean? Like it, it's probably, and I'm, I'm pissing people off now when I said that, and that's not, you know, like I listen to you and you and Mark from the work whistle are religious every week. Got to listen. Like you're, you were the two that I made time for while I was away. The rest of them was like, I'll get back to them when I come back mm-hmm. to the state, you know, back to the States, to New Jersey. Um, but regardless. So I listened to this one. Today I got caught up and I and I started listening and I was like, "Holy cow, dude!" Yeah, man. Yo, when he gets into what happened, I was like, in you know, in Afghanistan, I was like, "Wow!" I've always had this. He's in thing. Germany, by the way. Just to be clear, he's in Germany. No, but, but but when he got hurt, did he get hurt in Afghanistan? When it was, uh, he got well, deployed, have to, everybody will have to listen. I okay. I thought he was Don't in Germany. Spoil. I'm not going to spoil whatever. Sorry, I didn't, I, no, you're, but whatever, but whatever. Details. So regardless, I, yeah, I went and I was like, I've always wanted to do this thing when I'm in places and thank someone like mm-hmm. in military, you know, military, like just go, Hey man, thank you. And I never have. And I don't know whether, because I just feel like it's tacky or what would somebody say to me? You know, you're right. You're welcome. You know, like, I don't know. <laughs> but after hearing his story, I was moved to because I listened. It, it, your podcast was a little long. I think it was an hour 20, hour 30 today. So I listened to half of it going to work and then the other half coming over work. So going to work, I hadn't heard yet, like his handle, his Twitter handle or anything. And I didn't want to fast forward to the end to hear it right. and then go back. So I was like, I'll just wait until. So I had to wait all day. And all day it was sitting on me, and and I was just like, dude, this dude is a true hero, straight up. Like, for me as an American citizen, to know that someone like this goes off and fights for my freedoms. This is why a couple weeks ago when when I did the whole Colin Kaepernick thing, like, that's the thing that bothers me. Like, that's the people that you're disrespecting in some degree. And, you know, and, and I don't want to get into the whole debate of the, but I just feel like it's people like that that give us the ability to sit here and do what we're doing right now, Sean. Like, yep. I wouldn't have the ability to do a podcast, to play video games, to do any of that if it wasn't for people like Chris. And that's what, and, and to, to know that the dude put it all on the line mm-hmm. and like basically lost his career because of it, that meant. That means so much to me, and like everybody, it's it's what is it? Black Tie Gaming is the name of the of yep. his website, his Beach channel, everything. Yeah, go follow this guy. Like 
he's a true hero in every sense of the word, man. Like I tip my cap to this guy all day long and can't say enough. Thank you. How much it means to me that guys like you are out there making it so I can go to bed at night and not worry about anything and just don't have to worry about nothing. Like seriously, it's just amazing. So the the thing for me that was like probably most striking was that he was never talking about himself in the way that you just spoke about him, which is exactly the way I feel like it should. You should always be humble. You should always be all those things. But I had such an appreciation for what he did. His sense of duty was just like he had, it was, it's in him. Yeah. And so the way that he was telling the story, and he was almost going to like skip over some of these parts. Yeah, you, you really, like, really, back. I, w- I was like, wait a minute. What do you mean yeah. you were overseas? Like, let's let's talk about that. We don't yeah. have to. We can we can talk about video games later. Like everybody, we can talk about games with everybody. Like, what do you mean you were overseas? What do you mean you like? Why did you want to get involved with this? Like, I mean, it's you're. I think he was doing it at the time when like there's a war on terror, and you're signing up for the yeah. army. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. So I wanted to get to the bottom of that a little bit, and I just. I have such, I don't, I never know what I'm going to get when I talk to most of these people. Like usually I, I have, I've never heard of them. So I'm like, Oh my God, this just went from, I don't know if this is going to be any good to probably one of the best conversations I've ever had. Cause you know what, for me, and this is what I love about your show is when your show gets away from, I was playing metal gear solid five. Oh yeah. And then I really like last of us. Oh, and I yeah. really like uncharted four. Like, yeah. When you get away from those conversations, like we're all here, you're pulling people in because we're gamers. That's yeah. what's so unique about We the Gamer Cast. Everybody is a gamer. They're coming to the table because they're a gamer, but you're finding out the dirt, the details on people of like, well, what got you into gaming? And then an episode like that where you touch on gaming, you leave it completely, and then you start talking about stuff that like, it's really awesome. And and to me, that's where it just comes full circle for me. And that's where I'm like, that's what makes me like your show so much. Because, listen, I can get the news. I can get all that stuff anywhere. You know, From like, the Geek Cast. From the Geek Cast. From wherever. <laughs> from Nintendo Dads. From PS I Love You. Like, you can get it from everywhere. But to get stuff like that just blows me away. Because you just, like, you bring people in. And then you have this inviting aura to you. And it's just like... Boom! Next thing you know, you're t- you're talking about stuff that just doesn't even. I don't know. It's just awesome. Anyway, yeah, I, I like that a lot. Shout out to and shout out to also to Nintendo Dad Zach Erickson on this week too. So yes, enough yes. about my show. Yes. Um. So the next shout out has we have to a go mutual to- shout out. Well, no, no, no. Okay, don't Maybe. do that one. No, no. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about either. Riley Ann Rush. I want to give a shout out to the little girl who was just born yesterday. Um, to Jacob, was it yesterday or the day before? It was the I don't know before. this week. Shout out to this Jacob. weekend. This weekend, yeah, Jacob weekend. Rush, friend of the show, yes, uh, just had a little baby girl and so awesome. He took a picture today with her and like tagged you, me, and Nintendo, Nintendo dads in it. And, I know that's so awesome. And, and he's just dude, that dude is just a solid kid, man. He is the best. I love that kid. He is literally solid. Like his shoulders he's, are the yeah, size of your head. He's jacked. He's jacked. Yeah. You know, he's cock day, man. He's just awesome. And, but he is such a humble kid and so mm-hmm. awesome. And he'll send messages occasionally. It's just like, dude, you're just awesome, man. Yep. Thank you so much. So he, he's, but congratulations to him and his wife that, you know, I know he was excited and waiting for it and stuff. So this just, just amazing. Yeah, um, congratulations. Oh, that was great. He's just so pumped about it, too. How can you not be yeah, happy for him? Yeah, exactly. Um, next shout-out to our friends at Image and Form. And the reason why I want to give them a shout-out is we have some codes that we are going to give Ooh. away some free copies of SteamWorld Heist, SteamWorld Dig. We're giving away the 3DS versions. On the GeekCast, we're doing the PlayStation versions. But here, we're doing the Nintendo stuff. That makes sense, Bobby. It makes a lot of sense. It makes um, a lot of sense. <laughs> so, essentially, what it was was I reached out to Julius, who is the PR manager for Image and Form, and was just like, "Hey, can I get like one code here, one code here, and you know, North America, you know, Europe?" Next thing I know, dude, he bombarded me with codes, and. So what we're going to do is on this episode, I sent a tweet out 
this week and just said like, hey, if you guys can give us topics, we are going to read those topics. We're going to pick those topics and you will win a copy of the game. So we have two topics this week that were sent in by fans via Twitter. Um, and one was an email, but he also tweeted to me earlier in the week. So um, those two will receive copies. One is actually in Europe and one is actually in the United States. So that works out perfectly. But what we want to do is for the next giveaway for next week, we want you to le- rate this show. So everybody that has rated it previously and everybody that does rate it up until we air the show next Monday or we record the show next Monday will be entered and then live on the show, we'll pull a name out of a hat and that person will win and we'll actually do it. If you can, if you're in the UK or in Europe and you do this, just screen capture and tweet us an image of your review because we can't see them. Um, I can see United States. Sean can see Canada. Everybody will get entered and we'll go from there and then we'll pull the name. We'll pull two names and those people will win a copy of SteamWorld Dig, a digital copy of SteamWorld Dig and SteamWorld Heist for the Nintendo 3DS. So hopefully we get one from the UK or Europe and one from uh, one from the EU and one from North America. Unless you're from Quebec. Yeah, whatever. And <laughs> They're always excluded from contests in Canada. It's so weird. Really? Yeah, they? it's so funny. That's because they're French, right? So we might as well just follow suit with everybody else. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why. It's weird. So Mark would know. Yeah, he knows everything. Um, so smart. Okay, dancing. so are we jumping into topic one? No, I need to shout out for Gary Gray. I, that's, I was waiting for you to do it. No, oh, you know you weren't. Don't even try that. You're I like, oh, I, we're done. I, no, right here, I yeah. messaged you before, and you're yeah. like, yeah, yeah, whatever. You just do it or whatever you say. Dude. Shout out to Gary Gray for making me a handsome animated character on <laughs> Nintendo News System. This is something you guys definitely need to check out. And I am such a dummy because I did a shout out on my We The Gamer Cash show this week, and I totally fubbed it up. And even in this moment, I, you just need to, to Google or YouTube Nintendo New System. And I'm on there. It is so hilarious. Isn't it the broken because, bit? Say what? Isn't he at the broken bit? See, and I should have I should have had this written down. And now I'm dumb. Right. And Gary, and this is the worst shout out ever. Broken uh, block. Broken, broken block. block. Thank you. No, I'm like, on what? Twitter, yeah, it, it, on YouTube, it's the broken block. On Twitter, it's at the broken block is the, the name of it. And Gary, just so you guys know, is the one that um, did the, our opening to our show. So if you go and you watch the video portion of our show every week, there's an animated sequence. And he uh, he did that. So, But he's been doing his own thing now. And we, he hooked up with Justin Masson. You know, because it, it was just kind of ironic how it worked out because Justin did an intro for us at the beginning of the show that you always hear. And then I asked Gary to animate it for us because with the Ink Strike podcast, I knew he did animations because he did one for us there. So I said to him, hey, would you be interested in doing this? He did it. And then just platonically, those two got together to do continuation. He actually reached out to me as well to do one. But I, I can't was, wait. But I was away. I he hope he wanted, does it in like the Jersey Shore style or something. But he wanted us to do it together, so it was going to be the two of us. So oh, I was supposed be to be. I was supposed to be in yours, but I think I don't know. But anyway, that's that's basically where we're at. Well, um, I'm really sorry on the fubbed up uh, URL there. I don't. I still don't even see. I'm looking at I, d- like youtubecom slash block doesn't work. We need to get. Here's the thing. I think that Gary needs a hundred subscribers to make that happen. Yes. So guys. If you're listening to this, just just pause for one second. Yeah. Come right back. But if you're already on YouTube, you're in the right place. Go over mm-hmm. to YouTube, find Broken Block, Nintendo New System. It's just incredible. I will stuff. put a link in the yes. description of the YouTube video so you can just click it and go right over. We're gonna make it easier for Gary to for us yeah. to get more shout outs because this is just awesome. It's so original and unique, and he is so funny. He writes the material. I just love it. So it's thank good. you so much, Gary. I wish I could do a better job of promoting your stuff. I'll practice. So speaking no, of speaking of Gary, he actually won one of the he got one of the questions. Like 
I like this topic a lot. So he actually is winning one of the copies of Dig and Heist for the 3DS. So I will reach out to you, Gary, and get that to you. But his topic is, if we ran Nintendo, would you trust indies with your first-party IPs? And if so, which and who would you give it to? So I've got four games that I kind of pulled together because for me, it's a no-brainer. Absolutely. The indies have proven, hands down, that they are more than capable of handling Nintendo's IP. There ain't no mm-hmm. doubt in my mind at all. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's a guarantee, knock it out the park, they can do it and probably do it as well, if not better, than Nintendo. That's my feeling. Yep. So, did, are you in agreement with me on that? I am. I think we probably should just start with what I think is the most obvious one, if you want to go ahead and start. To me, the obvious one is Metroid. Or I, maybe this isn't obvious. No, I have I have Metroid my number one, and I, I give it to Image and Form. Oh! Yeah, because if you play SteamWorld Dig, that is the prototypical Metroidvania game to yep. a T. I mean, to a T. If you like Metroidvania games, SteamWorld Dig is you all day long. And when I met Brian a few years ago, well, no, last year. So I met Brian at a convention, um, a steampunk convention, and he let me demo heist, and we sat down, and he showed me it all. And then we went outside for about 20 minutes, and him and I had a conversation. And as I was talking to him, I told him about a story of me playing Dig, and I'm like, dude, you don't know what this game meant to me. And he was like, just looking at me like, I hear this a lot, but go ahead, you know. And I was like, dude, I'm playing the game, and I'm digging and digging and digging. I'm thinking to myself, this is strange. Why am I just digging? This is dumb. And then I go down, and I grab stuff, and I come back up. And and then all of a sudden, it just clicks. Out of nowhere, it just clicks. This is Metroid. I am now getting into areas that I couldn't get into previously because I didn't have abilities. And all of a sudden, I became a 15-year-old kid again playing playing Super Metroid. And I just job. Yes. And I just, yeah, I just fell in love. I just fell in love. And he (laughs) smiled and was like, that's exactly what we were going for. Like you, thank you. Thank you for saying that to me because that it, it, we don't hear it often, but I've never heard that before. I've never heard anybody describe it in that way and compared it to, because I was surprised to hear you call those guys out for this one. Yeah. I just, and the funny thing is, is when Toby and I, um, we, last year, we interviewed them. Um, we had Julius and Brian on the GeekCast. Mm-hmm. And we said to them, if Nintendo gave you the keys to the kingdom and said, we want you to take one of our franchises and do it, what's the one game? And him and Julius both go, you know what I'm thinking? And I'm both, one, two, three. They both said Metroid at the same time. So they have a love and a passion for the game. And I just feel like if you play that game, it's hands down Metroid to me. I play it and I was just like, dude, this is Metroid to a T. You know, so that's who I would give it to. Who would you give it to? I would have given Metroid to, this is probably more on the nose, so it's not as clever. I actually like that. And I'm glad that you elaborate on that a little bit. Um, for me, it's Drinkbox Studios, the I guys who did Guacamelee and Severed. Yeah. To me, like that's just it, again, it is on the nose. It's exactly yeah. um, that's how everybody describes those games. The Metroidvania yeah. game. I actually really like Severed quite a bit. I don't. I know you weren't quite as hot on it as I was. I didn't even play it. I haven't played it. It's. I think it comes out on the Wii U. Or it didn't even interest you, I guess, right? Like it just don't interest you. Kind of looked at it. I think you need to give it a shot if you can pick it up on the 3DS. I think it is. I think it's now on the 3DS, right? I, I played it on Wii Vita. U. It's coming to Wii U. Should, oh, okay, either way, you, either I think way. it's. I think it's great. Um, that, but that to me is like the Guacamelee was one of the first games where I'm like, oh yeah, I like because Metroidvania has been around for, for a while. My problem with Guacamelee was this: it's broken on the Wii U. There's a section where you get to, and 
You can't pass. You can't go to you. It, oh, you, know, man. you know, you know when you go to the to the Chozos, mm-hmm. which are Metroid, straight out of Metroid. Mm-hmm. So you go to the Chozos, you go down, and they give you like a move to do, and you're supposed to break the Chozo, and then you get that move or whatever. And you yeah, there's a move that will not happen at all. I've reset the game. I go back. I'm like, I know I'm doing it right. I know I'm doing the move right. It's not doing. It won't even let me do the move at all. So I got to go back for a third time now. And try to get, start the game over from the scratch and, and give it a shot, but I don't know. It, it, irrelevant. I like the game. I'm not gonna. I'm not knocking the game at all. I really enjoyed my time with the game. I thought it was great. I love the whole luchador aspect to it. I like everything with it. So it's a, it, it is a solid game. I really like it, and I just yeah, I'd like to see them. I, I feel like they deserve it. It's such a weird. Thing I to feel say. like see, but here's my thing. I feel like when you play the two games. Guacamelee, why I didn't feel like it was truly Metroid-ish is because you're just fighting with your hands. Sure. And that's where we're with, you know, with, and you're upgrading your move set. That's Mm -hmm. basically what you're doing. That's where with Dig, I felt like you're actually upgrading your inventory, your weapons, your inventory and all that stuff. And it's like, that's true Metroid style. I'll, like, I'll give it to you on this one. Yeah, Absolutely. I, I think I'm not going to fight you on this at all. Yeah, I think that's the one to go. Now, my, ne- my next game is it just because I know that he would wholeheartedly take it and I know he would do a great job with it. Let's give something to Jules, buddy. Let's do yes. it. Yes. Wario yep. 3D Land. I, I think you give him the Wario franchise and you go, go with it. Do your thing. Because he, fu- he, he could kill it. Hang on a second. Wario 3D Land? Give him a war. We'll give him a Wario game, but give him. Sure. But he wanted to do the the Wario 3D. Remember when he yeah. said he, yeah, he wanted to do 2D stuff. That's the whole thing. That's why I'm caught up on. But no, that's no, okay. no, 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 not dreaming. 3D. I'm talking like the, he took the um. He wanted to take the Virtual Boy Wario game and convert it, but I wouldn't say convert that game. Do whatever you want to do. Just sure. take the character, take Wario, make it make a. Th- and I'm saying 3D because I'm saying. You're taking it in the three dimensions. You're going front, back, center. Gotcha, gotcha. Probably, probably be on the 3DS and then, you know, go with it. Just have fun with it. But I think he would kill it. See, and I was thinking the same thing with him. Um, but two things. One was the the multi-dimensional kind of like foreground, mid-ground, and background kind of thing that he loves. I think that plus what really stuck with me is him saying that he likes to make games that are hard as balls, I think he said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Donkey Kong. I want to yeah. like. I want to see him take on like Donkey Kong. Get a nice, beautiful game, and and it is that background stuff. It's hard as hell. Uh, I think that would be a great fit, and yeah. just kind of like a massive project for him to really sink his teeth into. I agree. Like, that would just be and like the highest. Like it's it's what Link, Mario, and Donkey Kong like yeah. right up there. I think I'll go with you on this one. I, I totally do. I, I I like where you're going with that one. Um. I got two more. Okay, let's do it. But I'm gonna do. I'm gonna flip my order here because the, the 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 fourth now is kind of out there, and it's got to, some magic has to happen for it to happen. So <laughs> we're gonna hold off on that one. So the next one is F Zero. Yep. What is it? Shinum Multimedia. Who the heck is that? They did Fast Racing Neo. Oh yeah, of course. It's a no-brainer to me. Yeah. Like they should Nintendo should have stopped them in the process and said, "Hold up. Let's convert this to F0 and go." Like that to me is a no-brainer at all. Now, if you had cuz you seem like you were going to go someplace else with that. What are you thinking? No, I just wanted to do F0, but I would I actually was I was racking my brain on who I would give it to, but that again, talk about a guy who or a, a team who deserves it. Like that's yeah. what they were going for. That's pretty much what they were going for and they killed it. So mm-hmm. everybody that that played it, compared it to it, it killed in the metri- the metacritic. I think it was an 81 in metacritic. Uh it was an 8 out of 10 in terms of like fans and reviews. So it it really did great, you know, for me. I think that that would be the way to go. This is my far-fetched out there idea, okay? I would, because this just recently came up, I would buy Earthworm Jim. Oh, they just sold it. <laughs> did, did, did they sell Earthworm Jim? Yeah, they just, they, they had the, like a whole like yard sale. Interview yeah, just sold but, everything. But did he sell, but did it actually sell? 
Earthworm Jim. Yeah, let me. Well, keep talking, and I'll, I'll see if I can. Because I saw that it was up for sale. I didn't see that it actually sold yet. But okay, what I would do is I would get that franchise, Earthworm Jim, and I would give it to Zoint Games because. Oh, that's a good call. They got well. Here's there's two reasons. One, <laughs> one, Klaus actually worked on Earthworm Jim. When he came from um, mm-hmm. Sweden to the United States and got a job, he actually went to work for them and worked on, I think it was Earthworm Jim 2 is the one he worked on. Yep. So, but if you've played like Stick It to the Man or Zombie Vikings, yeah. they got a real quirky style to them. And it's just awesome. Like they have a weird, crazy sense of humor. They do a lot of goofy antics. So I feel like that style fits perfectly. Now, that's kind of cheating because Nintendo doesn't own Earthworm Jim. But I'm glad just, I didn't have to point that one out. No, no. But, I mean, just because it was up for sale, that's what made me think about it. And I was like, buy it and then give it to Zoink Games and go mm-hmm. here. Because I don't think Zoink Games can probably afford it on their own. I don't know what it would go for, but that's probably, like, the crown jewel mm-hmm. of that whole yard sale, as you say. Um, that's the one that's got the... the the most notoriety, like people know Earthworm Jim, so um, I can't see anything that says any that that anybody's bought it up. So I, I don't know. I, I don't think it's sold yet. I no, know you're probably it, right. I think that it's. I know it's definitely up for sale, but I don't think it's been sold yet. So, so I have one more. Go ahead. What's yours? This and I want to say this with the utmost respect to the late Satoru Iwata, uh, but I would love to see another Brain Age game, and I feel like. Like right, I just can't think of a Japanese indie developer who would take this on. I can't even really think of a Japanese independent developer. Period. Uh, to be honest with you, people are probably screaming at me some sort of something. But I would like to see Jonathan Blow, <laughs> the oh, guy who made yeah. the witness and Braid. You know what? Like, kind of give us like Brain Age Plus, basically, just like for like because Brain Age is is for everyone, and it yeah. has that. It's kind of nice that it it scales depending on if you're like a kid or you're an adult and it ages you. Like, I really like that mechanic and they trans- translate it nicely to Wii Fit. I agree. But I would like to see, if not exactly a brain age, but like something to that effect. Just let I him agree. and and let, um, he can combine his his brain with the design of uh, maybe Absolutely. somebody from Nintendo. I think that would be really cool. But when I, I think agree. brain age, I think Jonathan Blow for sure. Yeah, you, you nailed that one. I agree completely. Um, so let's just put a little bow in this and wrap it up like we always right. do. So first game we would do Metroid. We both agreed at the end. We give it to Image and Form. Let them take it. Congratulations, Image and Form. You got you got Metroid. Have fun with that. Make a great game. Um, the next one, we want to give it to a Toy Games. Yep. But I said Wario. You said Donkey Kong, and I agree with what you said. I think that Donkey Kong is definitely – Right, where right in Jules' wheelhouse, and and them guys would crush it all day long mm-hmm. and do an amazing job with it. Um, they're the only ones who can bring back my love for Donkey Kong Country. My, they're my only. <laughs> hope. They got to show me some. They're the ones. Jules is the guy who can show me something new with this franchise. It's possible. You're probably right. He he, he does some amazing things. He's incredible. Yeah. Um, and handsome and. Oh, stop. <laughs> the next one is F Zero, and. Shinum Multimedia is who we would give it to. Fast mm-hmm. Racing Neo, Fast Racing Neo. Um, so that would be who we would with that one. I threw out Earthworm Jim. Said give it to Zoink Games, and then yours was Brain Age, and you're saying give it to Jonathan Blow. So Let's do it. That's how we would do it in those terms. So thank you, Gary, for the awesome topic. We really enjoyed it. Next one, I'm going to actually read the whole email. You okay with that? As you're drinking, I'm here. I'm just hanging okay. out. Um, do you want me I, to read it at the same time? We can do it like in stereo. Why don't you read it? Um, 25 year old gamer who is dedicated to Nintendo, especially the legend of Zelda series. I started listening to podcasts about a year and a half ago, and I got into your podcast more recently because if we ran Nintendo was mentioned, I started about a year ago, listening to podcasts to help make my work day go by fast because I listen at work. I wasn't able to put my opinion out to the podcast due to me being at work. And by the time I can, the thought has already passed. Recently, I have been putting my opinion out to the podcast to be heard and have been tweeting out to you guys as at King of the Pirates, and it has been a great encouragement with both of you responding to my tweets. I'm getting married in October, and listening to your podcast has been very helpful with my stress. Yes, shout like seriously, that is yeah, like that's, that's crazy. Yeah. 
yeah, shout out to you, man. That's tough stuff. Um, back to your email. When the wedding is over, I hope to be more active tweeting and sharing my ideas and thoughts about gaming. I know I tweeted this before to Bobby, but I wanted to share it again. But for if we ran Nintendo, what Nintendo franchises would you bring to virtual reality and which ones would you put a restraining order for VR? <laughs> I like that. I like that. Anyway, thanks for the amazing podcast and keep up the great work. Thanks, Brendan Myers. Dude, that like just stopped me dead in my tracks. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know about it. you, but sometimes you just, you're just you scrolling through your emails or your tweet or whatever. You're just kind of like, oh, well, that's great. That's great. And then this one's just kind of like a little different. Yeah. Little, like, just out of nowhere. I know. I, it hit me and I was like, wow. Wow, this is awesome. I, I was just about to quit everything. Brandon, yeah, I was like, back in. I was just like, I'm done. Yeah, dude, he, it, I'm just so humbling. So humbling. Very cool. Thank you very much. Um, so you are going to win a copy as well of Dig and Heist on the 3DS. I will reach out to you, get your codes. Um, but that said, love the topic. I think the topic is especially spot on, um, especially with Miyamoto basically kind of shooting it down a little bit this past week and saying, you know, that they're not really ready for VR and they're not looking at it that much, especially for Mario and things of that nature. Um, I'm of the mindset that I'm not ready for VR, me personally. I don't feel like it's there yet. I don't feel like, and I haven't played it yet. You know, mm -hmm. I, and when I say I don't feel like it's there yet, I don't feel like I trust the tech yet. Like, I don't want to be a guinea pig yet. But I know a lot of people are into it. A lot of people want to do it. So I thought, okay, let's do this. Because this is if we ran Nintendo. This isn't would Bobby Paul's buy a virtual reality headset. So if we <laughs> ran Nintendo and we could figure out a way to do it and it'd be cost effective and all those things or whatever, would we do it? I think at some point, yes. I don't know if right this second is a time, but that's not the question. The question is, is what games will we bring over to VR? So I got three that I would bring to VR. Um, and I think the first one is a no brainer. And I think you hit it on the last question is that the first one and that's Metroid. I think it's, it calls to it, especially yep. when you played a lot of the first person Metroids, like yep. this is a no brainer. You know what I mean? Yep. Like you're Samus, you're going around, you're doing things absolutely all day long. Like I think that is, it needs it. You know what excites me most? The reason I had this on my list as well. And the thing that excites me most about the idea of a first person Metroid game in virtual reality is what they gave us when we first started seeing Metroid in first person where you had the reflection Mm -hmm. of the, like of the face and the mat like and if if they were able to pull that off yeah i think that's really gonna it's i feel like it's an easy win in virtual yeah. reality and i'm not really seeing too much of that level of immersion like it of course you maybe you look down and you see a body and that's kind yeah. of that's one thing but if you like if it and if the thing is strapped to your face and just a couple inches away you're seeing a reflection and you're somebody else i feel like that's really yeah. good could mess up your brain well, but, because but the other thing too is way. like, well, because the other thing too is like you're putting the, the yes, suit exactly. on. So when you put that on, and then they all of a sudden make it feel like you become sad, like people are gonna feel like they're Samus. They're I gonna feel. feel super sexy. Absolutely. Um, but I only play I, on Sundays though. <laughs> but I feel like that nails it. Like that's definitely it. Soup to nuts, ready to go. Like that's the game. Um, that means we're not going to see another Metroid game for another five years while Nintendo sits on this whole virtual reality oh. thing, and that'll be the next one we get. Yeah. <laughs> um, the next game that I feel like calls for it, beckons for it, Star Fox. Mm -hmm. And Dude, I feel like... Taking with, my answers. Hey, man, I'll have to tell you. All right, it's your show. <laughs> it's our <laughs> show. Stop it. So my thing is, is like, you create this Star Fox game that's a true 3D immersion, like you have dog fights, things yep. of that nature, I think it crushes all day long. And I think that a lot of people, you give them a true Star Fox that they really want, you don't have this wonky two levels of shooting, like one on the gamepad and one on the screen. And like it's all right there immersive. Like if I look up, I can see a ship coming across the top and I could like turn the, the turrets and shoot at it and stuff mm -hmm. like that. 
I think it kills all day long, and I think that's a definite no-brainer. Here's the thing. It's weird. I don't know if we ever really see this happen or if there's another example of this, but Star Fox Zero is a virtual reality game that was shoehorned onto the Wii U. Pretty much. That that game is, and that whole idea of this sort of like asymmetrical controls and, the, and display, that is – a virtual reality game. They were trying yeah. to think like the the your gamepad that you're moving around. That should yeah. be your head moving around. Yeah. So I don't know why I'm turning. My, if anybody heard me like kind of move around, it's because I'm moving my head like crazy. <laughs> I'm going to tear something, tear my neck a little bit. Okay. But that that's how I look at Star Fox Zero, and it's why I feel like it didn't really work. It was um, it was just misplaced. Yeah. That was a virtual reality game right there. I'll let you take the next one. Since. Okay, thank you very much. So the next one is kind of a twofer. I'm going to okay. cheat a little bit. The one time you give it to me, I'm going to cheat a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, I think anything that has a cockpit is really what virtual reality will strive for. So Star Fox, we already nailed. I wonder if there's a way to do Mario Kart in sort of like a first person, like at the wheel. Yeah. Um, I think that that would be really neat and just super hectic and being able to throw your power ups or just it would be interesting to see like what it looks like if you turn around and you saw angry luigi as he's passing you or you know one of those things like just seeing because there's so much character that you're able to see in mario kart when the when the uh the replays go yeah and to be able to like be right there with it i think it would be super hectic and awesome so kind of a an out of the box thing there and then my my cheating one is is f-zero as well if yeah. i was able to play at that speed mm-hmm. i think i mean that 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 would be a technical showcase oh. and for me that's what's missing in f-zero is like it's not cool anymore to be the fastest like racing game anymore because any game can be fast now yeah before it was it was pretty special yeah. um but at this point any game can be that fast so we got to take it up a notch we got to make yeah. this i remember when we were first playing F zero, my parents would come around and say and look and go like I can't watch this because I'm going to be dizzy. I'm going to be sick yeah. looking at this. And and us growing up with it was never really a big deal. But I want that same thing. Like now, like as I get older, I want that thing to make me almost throw up because I'm going so fast. That's how 200 CC made me in Mario Kart. I could only, <laughs> I could only play for a little bit. I was like, I'm done. I'm out. Certain yeah, tracks, certain yep. tracks, I could run no problem. Other tracks. No, like when I played the F Zero track, on oh, CC, exactly. I was like, "Yeah, I'm done. I'm done with this. I can't so do it." Speed, so much I know. speed. Um, so those are mine. I got a couple more, but I don't know if you want to drag this out too much. Or well, I got one. I got one more that I want to do. Um, okay. I feel like Zelda would be a game that you could definitely do. You know, virtual reality. I don't know that it's a prototypical like. You know, but I feel like if you, because you obviously you got to go with you know some type of motion controls, you know, to do it. I don't know that a controller would give you that true feel, but I think that like holding the shield up and swinging the sword, you know, I think that would work well with this. Um, and for the most part, because Link doesn't jump and things of that nature, you don't mm. need to really worry about that type of stuff. So I think that's why I think it would work for that game i'm trying to think of that like i so i was looking at the latter part of brennan's question and he asked which ones would you put a restraining order on yeah and i actually have in my no column i have zelda and it's conflicting to me because it depends on whether or not it's on the onus for nintendo to sell us on vr as as like the gimmick that it is or whatever you want to call it it's something new for us to to buy into And I don't necessarily know that Zelda sells us on VR as a thing, as a new way of interacting with it, but I I don't know how you sell something new without Zelda. I've I've gone on this, I've gone on record before saying like the NX must launch with Zelda. And I actually question whether or not that has more pull on a greater number of gamers or more important group of gamers than Mario. So I'm conflicted. And I, I don't know necessarily know that it's as good a fit in terms of look how, Look how great this is. I think the games that we started with do that better. But again, how do you have a new way of interacting with the game and not have Zelda? Yeah. So I don't I don't know. Maybe we yeah. do the same with mobile. Maybe there's maybe there's no fit for Zelda on a mobile game. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um Okay, so you went into that. Like what is what's another game that you don't feel goes on VR? 
this is so bad, but I don't know about Mario either. Like the I biggest think, ones. Yeah, I no, I think Mario stays off. And and the reason is is how do you jump? How, yeah. You, like, that's what v, VR is basically what is real. Like with mm-hmm. Mario, Mario is a running around doing stuff and jumping and backflips and all like you can't get that in VR, mm-hmm. I feel. You know, like you can't become Mario in VR because I just put like Mario, Yoshi games, Donkey Kong game, like anything that's a platformer mm-hmm. to me just doesn't work. Now, Nintendo, that's the one thing that Nintendo does better than anybody is, takes the things that you don't think are possible and makes them possible. Absolutely. I was just thinking, I've been playing uh, Super Mario 3D Land, yeah. and this is like the 3D as a new way of visualizing the game. I mean, when you turn that 3D on and you're in those special little areas where yeah. it kind of plays little yeah. tricks on your mind, yeah. Nintendo will be would be the one to figure this out. Yeah. It just doesn't re- readily jump up at me. And I know there's companies like, I'm pretty sure it's Insomniac, uh, who's actually working on a third-person game for PlayStation VR. It might be somebody else, but something like that. And I remember looking at comments under the story and going like, what are they making a third-person game or like from that perspective in in virtual reality like that doesn't make any sense but the way that the the developer was talking about it was instead of it kind of frees up a a thumbstick for the controller that you're holding anyways because you've always used one as the camera and even in a third person you're still kind of like swinging the camera around so there is something there and developers are tackling that issue i i just don't have i obviously haven't seen it yet but there is something there it is closer than we think for a third person perspective to work on virtual reality but i don't know like that's so i don't know maybe it's a temporary restraining order yeah. like i wouldn't lead with that so i don't know yeah. brandon if that's okay with you or just i those are my two that i would just yeah. put i would hold off for now i agree i agree because they're very touchy you can't mess you can't mess with yeah because if you don't do them right it, it really it's not worth doing at all i feel i totally agree um, but that's all I have. You don't have. Any- I, I'll do one more. Okay, good. I mean, I was gonna mention Punch Out, but I mean, that's whatever. Uh, the one that I have is really the game that. Well, when I think about Nintendo 64, it was very kind of techy. It was Pilot Wings. I think would be kind of neat to see in, yeah. in virtual reality. That's it would almost like because they can do weird things with your brain, where you, it almost makes you feel like you're up in the air. They can do really like kind of mess with your inner, like your inner ear, the balance and yeah. all of that. I think that would be kind of interesting to that's see Pilot Wings in, uh, in virtual reality. So I agree. That's a good one. That's a good. One. Thank you. That was fun. It was fun. And now so, we come back to the world where it's not going to happen. Like, I, I, I was like, F Zero would be badass. I know. I do want to look um, over to the Angry Luigi. So I will reach out to you guys, get your codes this week. Again, if you would like to win SteamWorld Dig, SteamWorld Heist, rate this podcast, go to iTunes, um, and just however you, however you listen to us, doesn't matter. Rate us in that way, take a screenshot. Tweet it at Sean and I. Um, we'll also float around and try to compile everything and get it all together. But um, And then we will next week write the names, put them in a hat, pull the names, and you'll win a copy um, of SteamWorld Dig, SteamWorld Heist for the Nintendo 3DS. That is all. Wait, what if people have already... Um, I, t- I said that. Rated. If you've already rated us, you're automatically added. Okay, sorry. I was I was just trying to see if there was reviews here in Canada. Johnny Dreamer, shout out to Johnny Dreamer. I think that's Johnny B. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He gives a shout out for my J-pop. Yeah. Thing. So, well, yeah. So if you've already left a review on iTunes or whatever, we're gonna just that goes right in. Okay. Like I think Josh Stapleton and yep. Jacob both did ones. Matt South, he did one. I think. I forget everybody that did them, but whatever. We'll just put them in the hat and pull them out and, and go. And then if you haven't, you know, if you haven't done one, now's your chance. You have until next Monday to do it. Ooh, um, time, clock is ticking. Yes. So, again, that is all. Thank you guys for listening to us on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher. We really appreciate it. Watching us on YouTube, that means the world to us. You can follow me, Instagram, Twitter, at Nintendo Gurus. You can find Sean at Sean Capri, Sean Lake Connery, Capri Like the Pants on the Twitters. And peace out, Cub Scout. 
See me later. <laughs> totally got me because I didn't do that. I know, you didn't do it for him. I thought you were going to do it. I was going to do it for you too, and I said, nah. I was waiting for it. I'm Let like, oh man, I'm going to be paralyzed. Let me see what he does. I should have taken it from you. There What's we up go. With... There's the pretty boy. No, I'm gone. That's me. Hang on. Get it together, Sean. Jesus. Too many podcasts. That's your problem. You gotta figure out what show you're on. My computer needs to figure that out for me. That's true. There we go. There we go. Hi, Bobby! <laughs> What's up, Sean? Oh. Uh, okay, you're very pixelated. What? Is that me? Or, like, do you see me clear, or am I pixelated to you? You just you just broke up a little bit. All right, let me go restart my router, because I don't want to okay. take the Jesus. That's got to be what it is. Let me yeah. do a quick speed test. Now we're good. On my on my side, you're clear. That's all that matters, really, right? Yeah, but I just don't. I just want to make sure that it's not all like, eh, 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 like it was that one week. Up. Yeah, maybe I should just restart it. What do you think? Uh, it's totally up to you. Why don't you tell me about your trip? <laughs> Yeah, but I can't go restart and tell you about the trip at the same time. I know, but maybe it'll like clear out by the time you're like you're already. Yeah, clear. You know what? It's starting to clear out. Okay, I think I think we're good. I think we're fine. I mean, just um, relax. Um, you fucking relax. I can't believe that you and Mark miss each other by dude by hours. Like I, I kind of wish that there was a way for you you to leave something in the airport. I wish the terrorists didn't ruin this for us where you could just oh, like dude, leave a package. I, know, but... I was so jealous. So it was such a weird thing too. Because you were gone, but it's not like you were any further away. I like physically, I guess yeah, you were yeah, further yeah, away. Yeah. It was like it wasn't really yeah. different. Like, like it shouldn't have been. Like hey, I heard Toby. Is this the one that you're talking about? No, 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 no. This is the one that I was talking about, Toby. Okay, I love that this is a thing now. I like, dude, I literally like enormous I'm, mugs. Is I, exactly. A thing. I'm like telling Tony, I'm like. I gotta find big mugs. Who, when I go on the podcast or show, I gotta like <sighs> gloat about these new big gigantic mugs. Chelsea, I need a bigger mug. <laughs> well, I got a Donald Duck one the size of this. I got yeah, a like. Uh, oh, that's I got awesome. a, a, another Animal Kingdom one that's the size of this. Dude, I just like I'm like hook it up, man. Let's this go. is gonna be our We're, thing. I don't have a mug with me today. I I need to hydrate a little bit. I have fine. a bit of a headache. It's fine. it's fine. But I want. I like that coffee is our thing. Yeah, exactly. You know what? It's ever since that very first podcast. You guys just need a coffee. Go get a coffee. Let's just, let's just have a coffee. Let's just let's <laughs> chat. <laughs> it's good stuff. But the one thing I did learn, and you'll you'll hear it in podcast. You'll hear you'll see it tomorrow at the end of the vlog. I'm like, I am going on a diet, and I'm going mm. to start exercising because You're saying that I, podcast. dude, it was horrible. Horrible, dude. I have never felt so out of shape in my life. Like, I really felt it. And I was like, that's it. Done. Like, Wednesday. I told Tony already, I'm signing up for Weight Watchers on Wednesday. I'm done. This is it. Like, we're going to, tomorrow, um, when I come home from work, we're going to take the one spare bedroom mm-hmm. and, like, start cleaning it up, getting it all broken out and ready, and then bring up the exercise equipment, and then... Um, no excuses. No more I can't excuses. wait to see the transformation. That's the best thing is yeah. that you document I mean, everything. Yeah, it's gonna I know. Be I know. I'm it. such a tart like that. Man. No, it's like, good. And, and but, that but, combined with you, when you say you're going to do something, yeah. you're like, you know what? I'm moving the game room. Yeah, and I just do it. And you just did it. It's painted. It's everything's done. Look at me. Look at me getting shit done. <laughs> yeah, but you're, you're cute. Here, so that, that, that makes up for it. All right. 
so there's that. <laughs> that was what he did last time, son of a gun. No, I know. I don't. I'm running out of you stuff. Need, you need to get it done, dude. Seriously. I had. Uh, there's a couple patches. I think I'm gonna I have to, to bring do. Alan Paxton on the show. At least Alan Wall's complete. He just pinned it up with like nails and stuff. <laughs> I, know. I know. Apparently, he took it all down. I know. I took my dad I just guess gave me a nice case. Like you've got like those glass cases. Mm -hmm. My dad just gave me one. Oh, he yeah. had he had a bunch in his basement. He's like, I don't need the fourth one. If you want it, you can have it. I'm like, I'm coming over. Yeah, man. I, so I'm gonna set it up. I'll probably go in the basement. I think. Because yeah, I think this is still gonna be, it's still gonna be shells. But I've got a little yeah. patch over here. I gotta, I gotta fix. Because I was just gonna leave I, it, and Chelsea's like, because it, like it was covered by like the computer desk here, and I was yeah. like, whatever, just leave it. And Chelsea's like, no, don't just leave it. So yeah, my buddy Fixing Miguel, he uh, he's gonna take because I had, I got eight of these big glass cases, and yeah, so he's taking, yeah, he's taking two of them. And then I got two more down here. I got to figure out where I'm going to put them at. But Those are the best, man. Oh, right everything's there. just looks so good. Yeah, they're amazing. Every now and then, like, because I don't really get to, like, Ch Chelsea is, she uses a computer that's by the Bebo wall. Like, you've seen, I, I was mm. on the podcast a while back. Yeah. Like, she's there. I don't really get to sit and look at it that often. I'm going to restart. I'll, oh, I'll be, am, I, am I tripping out? Yeah, but I just want to make sure. I don't want to take okay. any chances. I'll be right, right. back. Give me one minute. 